Hello everybody out there. My name is Jason Norton. I'm the pastor here at King's Trail Cowboy Church and I'm actually excited to do this little intro to the sermon um, because it's always a, a good thing to get your mind right and to get settled before you hear God's Word. And speaking of God's Word, I have a scripture for you. It's in Matthew chapter 11 verse 28. It says, Come to me all you who labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. So when Jesus said, will you come to me and find rest, he also said for you and I to learn from him. So in this sermon section, I pray that you learn the words of Jesus. I pray that you learn the word of God. And um, as you're listening, just remember that this is God's word, and his promise to you is, Faith come by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So enjoy the message. Um, I pray it blesses you, and not just you, but everything in your life. And uh, we'll see you at the end. Love you. Bye-bye. I think y'all did great. There you go. What is the deal here? So, I guess, uh, did Joey step outside? Yeah. Well... Have, ladies, have y'all ever had just like a, like you look in the mirror and you're like, man, I got a, this is a great hair day. <laughs> and then you got other days where you look in the mirror and you say, what am I going to do with this? Where's my hat? Yeah, where's my hat, right? <laughs> so, Michael, like I'm having that where's my hat day, but on the inside, <laughs> in all sincerity, and when y'all started, I could hear the music start on that song, all that went away. Um, when y'all were singing Fear is a Liar in my head, I was replacing lot fear with a bunch of other words. And uh, anyway, y'all for sure blessed this guy today, so thank y'all. <clears throat> Gracious Heavenly Father, I thank you for today. Lord, I thank you for these folks that are uh, gathered here. Um, I think the president said something along the lines of, unless it's absolutely necessary. Amen. And Lord, I believe your word is absolutely necessary. So I thank you for the folks that are willing to gather here for that necessary edification. Lord, I thank you for picking a guy like me to give your message. And hopefully I can get out of the way long enough so a little bit of it can be, be given to your saints and they can apply it to their lives. Lord, I thank you for Calvary and that uh, I am assured eternal glory because of it. Lord, all I want to do is share that fact with people and glorify you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Y'all doing all right today? Yeah. Do we go through the obligatory coronavirus and we're home from school or we just move on? Amen. So I don't know if people saw the Facebook post or whatnot. I try to kind of put that out there just to draw a little bit of interest and maybe somebody will show up that otherwise wouldn't have. But um, I don't know if they got it or not. It doesn't really matter. I, I'm sure you all have seen it on uh pictures of all the fake Dr. Peppers and then the real Dr. Pepper and everybody has ever anybody ever tried any of the you know fake stuff and it just doesn't quite measure up man when I was younger like we'd go to restaurants and like I mean we're from Texas right Dr. Pepper is the way to go right and they'd say we ain't got that we got we got Mr. Pibb didn't care that's fine it's close enough right well, I mean, so when I was younger, that was what I thought, that Mr. Pibb's pretty close, and, and I, I can drink Mr. Pibb, and we're good. But 
uh, I had a brief stint at college at Tarleton State University, which is in Stephenville, and uh, very close to Stephenville, there's Dublin. And for those of you that don't know, Dublin Dr. Pepper is one of the original places that manufactured Dr. Pepper. And at that time, they still had it, and Dublin Dr. Pepper is made with real sugar. And so you not only got real Dr. Pepper made with real sugar, and then you get a little older, and man, you just, Mr. Pibb don't measure up. So I was trying to be really cutesy and, and before posting that deal on Facebook and trying to come up with all these knockoff brands. And uh, what really struck me was, uh, you know, Wranglers and Rustlers, no hating on anybody if they wear Rustlers, but, you know, Wranglers just don't last quite as long, or Rustlers don't quite last quite as long as Wranglers do, right? There's probably a litany of other things that there are knockoff brands that just don't quite measure up, and I think y'all can probably get where I'm going, but I'll share a story with you, and I'm nowhere close to a storyteller as my old man is, but back when my old man was punching cows, when he was right after college, just before meeting my mom, and kind of in that time, he was punching cows, right? He was working for a cell barn, cell barn down in Carthage, Texas, and he had bought this old, what's called a bear trap saddle. Anybody know what that is? Got real high candles and a, a real high seat to it. And so if you get a bronc, you know, you, you can kind of squeeze on down and get it. You ain't going nowhere. But at that time, it's just, you know, for him, and, and I feel weird telling his story, but anyway, hopefully y'all can excuse me for that. But anyway, I guess back in the mid-70s, that was just kind of a black eye to wear, to ride a bear trap saddle. Like, it's an old saddle, and, you know, really, you're just not much of a cowboy if you got a bear trap saddle. So, anyway, Dad was working at, at the sale barn, and this, this guy, kind of a horse trader type guy, Bubba, you know who I'm talking about. You know that guy, right? The, the, the horse trader guy, you know what I'm talking about? So, anyway, he said, boy, John, I got this saddle right here. And Dad said, it's got more conchos on it than it does leather. And it's just really, really pretty. And he said, I'd trade you for that bear trap and, you, you know, give me another $50. And the way Dad tells the story is $50 meant a lot. So, he's like, well, can I pay that over, over a few weeks, like five weeks? So, he's going to pay him $10 a week plus his good saddle for this pretty saddle that he'd be proud to ride. And so, you know, that was the weekend, and the next Monday, he was going out to this old rancher's place to gather cows for the sale the following week. And uh, he said he got chasing after this old cow, and he roped her and dallied off, went to turn her, and as soon as, as, soon as he turned that rope, you know, slack come out, he said, pulled the tree right out of that saddle. And all he's got is just the back of the saddle, and the tree's gone, and so is the cow, and... Uh, that just really spoke to me kind of in, in this season that, that I'm going through that, uh, man, just the looks of things doesn't always mean that, that there's something that's old, tried, and true. Y'all with me? I know Jason's given a message in the past talking about the, the leaves, you know, the, the greener the leaf is, the less, you know, you know, if it's just dry, it crumble up and go like that, you know, green, so on and so forth. If y'all care to, uh, Genesis chapter 3, verse 7. As y'all are turning there, I, I'll just kind of share with you what led us up to this. Obviously, God created the heavens and the earth and, and man and animals and all this good stuff. And then there's this garden there in the midst of the garden and there's a tree. And they said, don't mess with that. And this is the NRV, New Redneck Version. Don't mess with that. And Eve said that she's going to anyway and shared it with him. And then, then they, you know, God found out what's going, as if he didn't already know, but God confronted them about what, what was going on. And, uh, the blame game started and now it was her. And then she blames the serpent, so on and so forth. So we get past all that. And then seven, three, seven says, then the eyes of both of them were open and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves coverings. So I feel, for those of you that know me, it, it almost, I, I'm way more comfortable if we like circle the chairs around and just have this conversation. I feel like I'm like preaching at you if I'm standing back here. But anyway, 
Y'all got anything y'all want to add to that? Y'all, y'all get the concept? Like, so Adam and Eve, they know they did bad, and the first thing they can find, they snatch it up and they say, don't look at me. Yo, right? I mean, that's what happened, right? How, how often do we do that very thing? Right? Often. Um, praise the Lord, not as often as I used to, but still more often than I ought to, right? So, um, and, and this is kind of back to that message Jason gave a year or so, year and a half ago or so. If you go over a few more verses, it's in Genesis 3, 21. I got to read from the page here because my cotton-picking dog chewed up. My book starts in Genesis chapter 5, so. <laughs> uh, Genesis chapter 3, 21 says, Also, for Adam and his wife, the Lord made a tunic of skin and clothed them. Yeah, so skin, right? There's an old saying, you can shear a sheep many times, but you can only skin it once, right? So an effort to make a skin, guess what had to happen? Something got to give it up, right? So Adam and Eve reached for something, just the closest thing they could find and put it on, and, and it, it, that's going to wither away, right? It's going to dry up and wither away. But then God provided something that's a long-lasting covering. Yo, with me? And y'all, y'all, please. I apologize. I'm, I'm. I feel so awkward sometimes because you, Jason, Dwayne. I know Lou. I know y'all, Everett. I've seen you all ago. I know y'all go through this too. Like the Lord tells you something, and you don't want to ever add to it, and and just be you up here bumping your gums. But you don't. You, you know, you're also looking at a clock, and I'm kind of known for a short message anyway. But uh, I've got some more scriptures here. I don't know exactly where to go and how to go, so I'll just go. Um, yeah, hallelujah. Um, so Matthew twenty four twenty four. If you, I I got that in my book, so I'm going to turn there. Matthew 24, 24 says, For false Christs, and, oh, yeah, somebody, there's a couple of y'all, woo, woo. That's, that's been there a long time, and to be perfectly honest with you, until today, I never saw those two words together, right? I knew, like, the concept of this scripture, but I never saw those two words back to back. But notice in my book, it's a little C. Y'all with me? So for false Christs and false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. Man, it kind of goes back to that Mr. Pibb story. I believe that we're getting close to, to getting close to getting close to the end times. I, I, we some might even argue that by golly we're here we're we're nigh upon it now. Yes. Yeah. Um. Man, it's I made a bunch of phone calls early this week to people trying to get teachers together for a, a deal that doesn't seem like it's going to pan out. But anyway. I think us as Christians, if we truly, truly have a relationship with Christ, truly have a relationship with Christ, not, and y'all know that I don't mean this irreverently or disrespectfully, but I've gave a message a while back that he's not interested in the Sunday morning booty call. He is interested in a relationship with his wife. Does that make sense? That's a day, and I'm... That's a day-to-day -day relationship that he's looking for with his bride. Y'all understand? If he was content with a booty call on Sunday and call me on Wednesday and then we'll catch back up with you, that's, that's Mr. Pibb. If he's content with you sending in a check once a month, that's, that's not what we're after. You know what I mean? It, 
I'll be quiet on that. I think y'all get that point. Um, 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy 4, 3 and 4. Second Timothy four, three and four. <clears throat> Second Timothy four, three and four says, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desire, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers. And they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. So they're going to basically take this that is a road map for life that tells us what was, what is, and what is to come. And they're going to set that aside and look at what's in front of them and be chicken little. I mean, are we not absolutely going through that right here, right now? So the last scripture that I want to share with y'all is in the book of Acts, uh, chapter 4, verse 12. Book of Acts, chapter 4, verse 12. It says, Nor is there in salvation in any other. For there is no other name under heaven given among men which we must be saved. And that name is Jesus Christ. I think where this kind of got started for some reason of late. um, My wife sleeps to the right of me in our bed. And I used to have a nightlight or a, a lamp that sits on my end table. And it actually is my daughter's, and I stole it from her. And then, I don't know, four or five months ago, something like that, um, four or five months ago, I stole it from her, brought it from downstairs to my nightstand. And then a little while ago, she stole it back. And so I used to turn that light on and read and, you know, read and fall asleep, reading reading the Bible. And so for the last... I don't know what it's been. It's been a while. Um, I, I haven't been doing that. I haven't been falling asleep reading the Bible because uh, I don't want to turn the, the light on in the hallway because Tara doesn't like that. I don't want to use her light. And that's my excuse. I mean, I can get up and go to a different room, but anyway, that's, that's what it is. So rather than doing that, I've been watching like boxing matches and MMA fights and all this good stuff. And where it struck me, and I don't want to get like too deep in, into the deal, but y'all, y'all have heard the, the fighter Cassius Clay, right? That dude was a, a great fighter. When he got older and further along, he changed his name to Muhammad Ali, right? And he followed a different doctrine. And uh, like I say, I don't want to get off into this too crazy, but man, seeing videos and images of that man when he was near his end was earth shattering. Like this guy, you champ to chump, right? This guy, 56 and five and some Joe Frazier. I mean, some of the biggest names, this cat laid them on their butt and ha- had the mouth to back it up, you know, mouth and had the knuckles to back it up. But then you, uh, fast forward and, uh, Holyfield, he was a Christian. He is a Christian. He had a similar, similar deal. And I was looking at net worth and all this good stuff. When, when, when uh, Ali died, he was worth $500 million. And Holyfield at one point in his career was worth the same. But due to kind of self decisions, Holyfield ended up having to cash all, all that in. But he still got like his being. But then you look kind of past that and where what's eternity look like for them? No, I mean, if, we, if we believe this Bible, and we believe from cover to cover, it's the, the gospel. It's the God's honest truth. 
Then we go back on Acts 4.12. It says, nor is there salvation in any other. Man, eternity is a long time, and uh, I, I can attest to this because the Lord has used me a time or two for some of the miracles that he, he does, and when, when I'm overseas and I see an old man that walks about like this, and you lay hands on him, and after that, he's doing this when you see God move and then he proclaims Jesus Christ after the fact when you see God move that just solidifies your faith then you take that and you say man if that works there that way wonder if that's going to work over here well he's the same yesterday today and forever he's the same God over there as he is over here but then it'll make you kind of question yourself when somebody calls you and says my father-in-law is in the hospital. I think I've shared this story with y'all. That uh, stage four bone cancer, and they just, they don't, you know, they got three spots on the old hip and one on a femur bone, and man, it's just, it's pretty much going to be the end. And, y you know, the thought runs through your mind, Lord, give him peace. And he said, no, that's not what I said to say. Yeah, but what if it don't work? Well, then you let me deal with that. How about that? You just do what I said. That sound good? Okay, yes, sir. In Jesus' name, these spots are gone. And then they call you tomorrow, and they say, man, they must have misread that MRI because there ain't no spots, there ain't no bone marrow cancer. Man, he is still a Savior that will perform miracles for his saints. Man, this... This thing we're going through right now did not, like, oh, I never saw that one coming. That's not, he's not going through that. Y'all with me? Yeah. Band, y'all come on. I know, it's, I'm always weird. I... <laughs> I was teaching the preteens last week, and... Uh, we were talking about self-control, right? And, and so that's fruits of the Spirit. And so I kind of wanted to go through the fruits of the Holy Spirit and break that down and, and works of the flesh. And we got through works of the flesh, and idolatry was one of the works of the flesh. And uh, I'm, I'm certain that there were other good answers, but for whatever reason, my daughter said an answer that just really resonated with me. And her answer was, anything that we pay more attention to than God. Amen. And, uh, I mean, that kind of makes me feel good that that was my kid that gave that answer. <laughs> but then it also made me feel bad that that was my kid that gave that answer. Because I just kind of made me look in the mirror and, man, what all is there that I'm paying attention to more than I'm paying attention to God? There are so many Mr. Pibb things that get in the way that, man, I'm not even tasting the real thing. And rest assured, he's got way more than 23 flavors. I'll close up and let these cats have it back. Gracious Heavenly Father, I thank you for today. Lord, I thank you for uh, being the real thing. Lord, I even thank you for uh, inventing the knockoff brands because that makes you appreciate the real thing that much more. And Lord, I thank you that you are a God that are approachable and you seek to have a relationship with your children. Lord, if we can just set all the, all the stuff aside for a minute and have that relationship with you, we'll just want to seek that more and more and more. Lord, if there's anybody in this group tonight that doesn't know you as their Lord and Savior, I pray that they are bold enough to say, show me you're real, because I have no doubt that you'll give a 24-hour shot clock and make them realize you are the real deal. Lord, I thank you. In Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen. Hello, everybody, again. Uh, you just finished listening to the sermon today. And uh, I have another scripture, imagine that. Lots of God's Word 
being poured into you today or tonight or however what time um, this message is reaching you. But in Mark chapter 4, verse 15, it talks about the parable of the sower. And the seed, God's seed, is God's word. And listen to this real quick. It says, And these are the ones by the wayside where the word is sown. When they hear, Satan comes immediately and takes away the word that was sown in your hearts. So since God's word has been sown in your heart during that message, it is our prayer that God solidifies that seed and protects it and watches over it and may it be watered. And just as God's word says, may he give the increase. And I pray he gives the increase of salvation in your life. And I need you to hear this real quick. I need you to pause what you're doing. I need you to listen. And I pray these words sink deep down into your soul. The Bible says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. So if you do, you do believe that to be true, then I pray that you, that you say this prayer. And you know what? You don't want to say it if you don't mean it, but, don't, but if you do believe it and you do mean it, then you need to confess it. You know, when, God, when the gospel of Jesus Christ is preached, it fills up your heart and uh, you desire to be saved. So you just say a simple prayer like this. You say, Lord Jesus, I ask that you forgive me of all my sins. I ask that you come into my life. Be the boss of my life. Today I confess you as Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord. Be Lord of my life. And if you did that, your salvation is um, totally and completely secured. And I would encourage you to go tell somebody that you got saved today or tonight or whenever you heard this message. And I pray we see you again back at the sermon section. I pray you come and visit us in person if... Uh, um, if you're around this local area. But either way, may God bless you, and we love you all in Jesus' name. Bye-bye.